Rosie Riley is kind of synonymous with New York Ladies GEA. Like, so she moved out here in 1986. Rosie O'Reilly, where do you start? Um, what an inspiration. Rosie is just one of a kind. She's in a class of her own. Um, she was in the room when New York Ladies was established in 1991. Uh, they, they had the first meeting. She was at that meeting. I think she was only 21 or 22. And she's played in every single season ever since then. Terry Connaughton, myself and his daughter was at the North American Finals in Philadelphia, I believe it was. And um, yeah, we just drove down from New York for the weekend and uh, we were watching it and we were just like, wow, this is a cool sport, you know? And uh, he was like, Rosie, why don't we have ladies football in New York? I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, why don't I just put an ad in the paper and we'll see who shows up and we'll put a few teams together and take it from there. Maybe 15 people showed up for the meeting and out of that meeting, uh, seven teams were formed. She really brings people together. She really sort of takes care of young girls when they come here. She, you know, she's done so, so much for ladies Gaelic football and she doesn't just sort of walk the walk, she talks the talk. She's out at football training every night of the week. She's running past a lot of us. She's, you know, fitter than so many of us. And it's actually like, you can't, you're like, how is she still this fit? She's even fitter than she ever was. Uh, Rosie's a personal trainer, so I think she's run five or six marathons. She she competes in high rocks competitions all over the world. Like so, she competes against like women in Germany, like all over the United States, back in Ireland. Like, and she's um, you know, she's a real inspiration to me because she's you know, it's it's it hasn't all been easy for her like all her life, and she's um. She's coaching and she's able to bring that drive she had as a player and try to instill it into girls. And she's able to help everybody go the extra mile. And, you know, she's the, the very famous kind of Rosie the Riveter uh, logo you see is kind of like she's she's that that's who she is. Like she's a woman who really steps up, rolls up her sleeves and she does the hard graft. So, yeah, she's a fantastic ambassador for not just women's football, but uh, the Irish community out here in, in New York. She's such a role model because I think especially as we live here in New York and it's so busy and you know there's a million things going on and you know I've even found myself being like oh I, I might not play this summer I might not Rosie has played every summer for 30 years and you know she's she works full-time she's a mother and you know she just shows that like it can be done and it's the best thing for you to do it well it's really nice to hear that and um you know, because I think, like, I think most players should give back, you know, and I know that through the years I've loved to coach and, um, you know, get involved with the underage and, you know, and the younger players on our team that join as well, you just kind of try to coax them along and, and, and you know, teach them and, and give them advice and, all of that and it's like it's kind of like you're trying to mother them a little you know um, but you know it's nice to hear that that's that's what they, they think of you. <laughs> the talent that we have coming through here is like amazing. They are some of the greatest young athletes I've ever seen and they're they're very approachable and they listen and they want to learn you know, that's, that's the good thing about them is they really want to learn and they really listen to everything you have to say. And, um, no, I think we just have a, a stream of unbelievable players coming along. We're very lucky. Well, this is uh, 2002, um, the Ladies Gaelic Football Association of New York, uh, guest of honor. Um, this is from the New York men's GAA the first ladies player to be honoured by the men and the second woman in a hundred years to be honoured. This is from the Cavan Men's Football Club, guest of honour. That one up there is from the Donegal Football Club, the Men's Football Club. This one shocked me now, the, the New York men's, you know, because they're the New York ladies football all-stars. Every year they pick an all-star team. So I think there's like six in a row, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the marathon. Uh, that was the first one in 2000, um, New York City. Um, this one was 2009, New York City. Um, this one was Virginia Beach along the Atlantic Ocean. That was a great one too. And my favourite of all, 2019, the Dublin City Marathon. It was great. Um, I had my family there, my daughter Natasha. 
this is the World Games in Dubai. So New York won, we won the ladies shield. This is Spartan. I ran um, a US national Spartan race. And uh, actually I got into it by mistake. <laughs> I thought it was a regular race. I didn't realize it was the Nationals. <laughs> but anyway, I stayed at it and ran it and uh, came sixth. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, yeah, that's the US Championships of High Rocks. It was in Chicago in 21. And this here is when we were in Ireland. That's the All-Ireland Final in 99. That's, um, this was when we got invited to um, Arison Uthron. Yeah, they invited the New York team there before the All-Ireland. This is the ball from 99, um, from the game. So all the girls signed it. And it's funny, I was just looking at it the other day and I was thinking, oh my God, where is everybody? Mm -hmm. Most of these girls are living in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I'd say half of them are in Ireland. We do have um, girls here that ha now have some that have kids playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the names here. And then, unfortunately, some that just fell away altogether from the sport, you know, which is sad. But anyway, of, of course, the most painful one is, uh, is 2011, you know, that famous um, uh, three trips in six weeks which, you know, was a killer at the end, you know. Um, financially and, you know, for the girls who were, we basically played the All-Ireland Final, it was a draw. We came back the next day and a week later we turned and back again for a replay. It's like, when you're so close, like, it's like, it has to be our year, <laughs> some year, and you just, you have that in the back of your head all the time, and it's like, okay, I'm gonna give it another year, I'm gonna give it another year, another year. All-Ireland Final 1999. Now, as you can see, the size of it, there was no such thing as lady sizes. These were all men's and you got the smallest men's size, which was like a big sheet on you. Now this one, I love this one. This is the Bank of Ireland sweatshirt that we got in 99. Everybody got one of these, but I love the slogan on the back. <laughs> Who says it's just a man's game? And of course, uh, the tracksuits, which are now more fitted and skinny tracksuits and all this, but this is what we had to wear. <laughs> I think you can fit three, gir brilliant. three yeah. girls in there. Oh, that was the top. I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. Again, I don't think there was lady sizes back then either. And this is now the lovely fitted ladies jersey. And it's our strip this year. And of course, horse sport at the back. <laughs> but they're so nice, really nice. Now that looks completely different fabric. Completely, oh my goodness. It's like so lightweight compared to this one. 